try lane back. It's just such a passive try lane for Rattlesnake, and I feel when you're up against a Wisp and a Chen for, as well, you want a more aggressive one. They're even going to use an Ice Path just to try and bring this creep down, but Puppy tries to find a solo kill, gets Fudger blocked away, but maybe he's on the right side, it's Rattlesnake on the wrong side. In comes Havost, dropping the Rocket Barrage. The nukes are there, the Flax as well. One last auto attack or an orb would have done it, but Kuroki... Can't find it. That was so close. He almost got the tether stun off, and that would almost guarantee a kill on the silence. Where, but where is the living armor? It just has not really. He been. has to use it on himself all the whole time. He's a full level behind Funic right now, and Funic is putting constant pressure up on him. And he's not farming particularly well. In fact, he might go down here. No points in nature's guys. Actually, he does have one now. He'll be able to escape. I'm just so used to them not having it. I started to say Oh, Funic! Before even looking, he might find the kill. Icy's oh, dropping my low. Goodness. Icy blocked him for a second. I don't know if Funic realized it. Now he's on the run. By wow. the way, their entire tri lane went back to the fountain. So that is a further disaster. Navi are already cruising. Yeah, Sil gold Silencer lead. is not the best off lane hero. 2k experience lead. Wow, and they're, they're, they're going to abandon it. They'll yeah, send. they're going top. This is so bad for Rattlesnake. It was such a weird tri lane. I I mean, we even said we just were not very sure about this trap by Rattlesnake. And normally, I try to reserve judgment unless it's horribly one-sided, but this is not looking good right now for Rattlesnake. What do they do to sort of get back in this game? Do they have a plan B? I think they can try and kill uh, Dendi in middle, but we see a smoke from Puppy. He is rotating top. They're wondering where everyone is bottom. They've been gone for too long. If they went to go heal and wanted to go back bottom, they would have already shown up by now. So Navi knows that something is up, and they're rotating around the map to try and kill Kunkka in the middle. There's your Dendi Invis rune. He'll pop in now. He drops the orb. He doesn't have enough follow-up yet. Lamb getting body blocked a bit by Puppy. He's been isolated, but with living armor, he feels he can take this fight. He might be wrong. Clapped back back in and slapped down by the Hellbear Smasher. He will fall. And for Navi, even finding a kill occasionally is such a big deal for them. They just need to get through this landing stage. Their mid-game is insane. And Rattlesnake a lineup that needs level 6. Silencer needs global. Only level 3 at 5 minutes in as a farmer. That's not good for them. Icy is level 5, but it's a tree on protector. What do you do with this? I mean, I think they need to try and shut down Gyrocopter before he gets BKB. They also need to limit Wiss uh, level. He's at 3 and 3 quarters right now. If he gets level 6, things are going to look really that's, awful for them. That's definitely the logical thing to say, Merlini, but my question is how? Like, with these heroes... I don't actually know how you do that. I mean, they could just try and... I don't know. Wisp is... or uh, Sorry, Tree is not the best rotator. And Funic is putting a lot of pressure on yeah, Kabu. He's going to find a solo kill here on Kabu. He's got a Surge online. And despite the last word silence coming through, Kabu will fall. Living Armor useless against he the He might die for Zulu, though. He might fall here. Last word is cooling down for 17 seconds. Funic on the run. The Stout Shield keeping him in fighting shape. He jukes. The Nikes on this guy, Barry Sanders, a.k.a. Funic, hiding in the trees. Luo still getting his ankles broken. Around the trees he go. Rain around the rosy. He wants to come back in. The Tranquil Brutes have been dispelled. Luo, at long last, I think he might have done it. He will get the kill. But Funic really made him work for it. You're going to have to grind this one out, he says. In the end, he does get the kill. Got to steal that intel. I actually do not like Silencer's build either. He went two points in Glaze of Wisdom as a support silencer. That almost does no damage. He has 47 int right now. 15% well, is He was actually the nothing. farmer in that tri lane. Oh, he, I mean, it's, it's, their tri lane was so weak, though. Sure, he's going to get some farm, but... I mean, he's going to be not very useful com considering how this early game has went for him. Right. Uh, he didn't have a good enough start. The, the other issue with Silencer is if you want to run him as a carry, you have to find some kills because he's just not a flash farmer. And unfortunately, he's not finding them right now. Denny orbs away from the mid lane. We will have Kuroki driving Icy back. He does have access to Nature's Guys. He's still on the run. Havos gives chase. Has a call down. Could look to drop it now. The tether stun's there. Boy, he moves fast. And Icy unable to escape. The Hellfire rains down. He'll bite the dust. And this is just looking better and better for Navi. Phase boots plus tether. He is moving so Smoking fast. Smoking fast. Wow, ridiculous. But it was nice move by him to face through the train protector to secure that stun. They really... Ooh, on middle. Dendi, nice dodge there. Anyways, he really needs to be able to get that tether stun just to pick up easy kills. We saw him miss an earlier kill on Silencer as long as... Oh, there's a coil on Coil and Lamb. They want to make a go. Dendi's got the orb. The silence to start. Now the orb to get away. A well-executed kill and now he'll go and wait for the 8 So close break. to having Fissure mana on the Earthshaker. I think he was sitting at like 122 mana when the Kunga went down. A little bit unfortunate for them. 
Yeah, I'm not sure about this Rattlesnake draft right now. And I think the big thing for me was running Treant as a farmer as well in a lane. Because you have to spend living, ar living armor against Darkseid. That's just a bad matchup. We'll pop his ult on Habose, but he's just going to die to a call down. Perhaps one more auto attack. There's your phase boost. Habose finds a solo kill. Living armor useless. Overgrowth useless. Does absolutely no damage. On and top, top lane, lane will have a big engagement. Dendi's drove in for this. No dream coil. Orbs forward. Trying to get away. He cannot phase shift out and he might fall. Funnix surged himself. Not Dendi. Might cost Dendi his life. He goes inside the tree line. He TPs out. Will there be a blind turret? There will. But I think it's just a split second too late. It was completely the wrong direction anyway. Funnick traps. Fissure available. Neo will throw it, but it's not that perfect fissure they needed. Funnick able to scoot out of there. And Navi are forcing three, four heroes to rotate using only two or three. While that's happening, Puppy's pushing mid. Wisp is farming bottom. And Havost is getting close to his BKB. Ogre Club already picked up. And here I might actually prefer... Uh, Mushi's Kunga build, which was a 1-2-2 two, two build. So at level 5, he had two levels of X. I think if they had an X on Dendi there into a tour or an X on the Darkseer there, they would have definitely secured the kill. Sure, Tidebringer is better for laning and for farming, but they really need some kills right now. And the pressure mounts bottom lane. You know you're ahead when... Kuroki is just sitting here calmly against this much AoE. He is level six. In fact, he's going in. Dendi's coming from the backside. Drops the ult, and now the call down rains through. Kabu, he might fall here. Dropping fairly low. Havost has fortunately been kept away. Oh, nicely placed Fissure will allow them to survive for the time being. But they are being driven back by two or three heroes with their entire team basically mounting a defense. Dendi, he might go back in. Kuroki's overextended perhaps. Dropping low. Not dead yet. Funnick joins the fight. Doesn't have the mech just yet, but he surges forward. Dendi over the top. Orb is there. Finds the kill. And now the dive onto Neo. In comes the Kunkka boat. It really accomplishes nothing. Just trying to keep Lamb alive for the time being. Icy tries to duke his way out. Cannot really make anything happen. So many heroes for Rattlesnake that just can't do any damage. And now Luo likely to fall. Lamb as well. Navi just stomping their way through Rattlesnake. This is starting to feel like a pub game, and it is one. At least Boy, Rattlesnake will GG out at the standard timing for a pub team. 12 to 1 minutes in. Well, they got thrashed. That please, was, please ban Wisp. That was just an outdraft as well. I mean, not only did they give away Wisp, but I did not like that that lineup whatsoever from Rattlesnake. Such passive supports, tri lane silencer, safe lane tree against Darkseer. <laughs> I mean, come on. You cannot win those lanes. Dock them points. We need some real-time updates on these hexagons, let's by get the, the way. Let's get the Bruno hexagons. We'll give them the keys to the castle. We'll let them start updating some of these. It'll keep them stimulated as well. Cause that, was just, that was just an ugly, ugly game. Oh, jeez. I feel, I feel, like, nauseous just having <laughs> watched that. I, just, ugh. I feel like they, I like mean, icky. a lot of these icky are pretty feeling. common picks. Everything's pretty common except for the Wisp pick. And... Again, they didn't really win mid, they didn't win their safe lane by any means, and they just got dominated by Navi's more flexible drafts. I like the Wisp pick, and I like the Darkseer pick, and the bands that they had, they didn't really have any particularly good heroes versus Darkseer, and Funnick just kind of rolled top lane, and because Triant was forced to living, him, living armor himself all the time, they kind of lost the other lanes that they probably thought they could have living armor for. Yeah, I really liked the fact that they got Wisp and then they went back for such a strong laner like Darkseer because, as I mentioned in the draft, it just puts Rattlesnake in that bind. Who do you focus on? Do you shut down the Darkseer or do you try and pressure the Wisp? You can't do both and we saw they tried to they focus on the They couldn't do either. Yeah, they couldn't <laughs> do either. <laughs> Giving up a first blood uh, did not help matters one bit. That mm. was such a beatdown that I feel we should just throw it over the analyst. Bruno, Lumi, what the hell just happened to Rattlesnake? In that I want to compare to... Hi. Uh, a game that I want to compare to the games we casted before. Pretty much the same intensity, the same dynamics, um, the same length, right? Um, you don't have a mic. Okay, I'm talking for your song. Things that happen. Mics. Anyways, um, I can't even say that Navi played superiorly better than Rattlesnake. I can't really say that Rattlesnake threw the game. 10 minutes. No, you can say they do the game. I think they had an idea and they failed entirely to execute from the first moment. Uh, I think they let Navi play the things that they're very, very comfortable with. So, can I, can I just yeah. get my flamethrower out about Sh Trium Go Protector? Ahead. Trium Protector is one of those heroes that yes. when you're not using living armor, mm -hmm. he's worse than a melee creep. Uh, he hits harder than a melee creep. He actually is worse than a melee creep. 
when the reason we see support treants play more frequently is when you're doing all the pulls, mm -hmm. we have more time to look all over the map for right. your allies mm -hmm. to actually living armor. How I many agree. times have we seen people diving and living armor was not available? Guess what? He was healing himself with it. And you don't heal yourself with that living armor if you're pulling. Right. Uh, um, I, I, I just can't, I don't feel I can pinpoint someone in particular or something. I, I, I mean, it's easy to point finger to the offlane tree. It's easy to point fingers to the silencer trying to see what he could do, whether the mid lane was going okay against the pack. I, I, I just feel they weren't there. They were trying something that in their mind they made sen it made sense, but uh, Navi is not a team that you can win just by trying new things. You have to try something and be like Zenith, that you have something different, but you have a goal, you have a way to execute. I just didn't feel Rattlesnake had any power of execution. I'm going to go with the Flames here. If they had to play Quantic tomorrow for TI3 like this, they would lose three zero. Well, I, to be fair for Rattlesnake's lineup, I think they were like, "Okay, we have these heroes. Mm -hmm. When we get to level six, we're gonna be bonkers." But from one to five, they couldn't fill in. It's like, mm, how are we gonna get there? I don't know. Yeah, because uh, when you have a level six tree and you get it quick, that's pretty right. OP. Yeah. Light silencer. Once you get six, especially against a hero like Wisp, that's pretty. When you get Conca level six. Yes. Yeah, I mean, the thing Just is... how do you get there? And at what cost? So what you're saying is they had a bad draft. Because in their drafting ideas, they didn't consider the fact that they had to get to level 6 in order to make something about the game. Yes. How do you get to level 6? How do you get to level 6? Um, try to kill the enemy heroes, don't die yourself, and try to last hit crypts. That's a good way to get a level 6. And that's why they GG out in 10 minutes. And that's why they GG out in 10 minutes. Uh, I think that was a fluke though. I think that Rattlesnake would not do that again. I think they will go to their traditional I doom. I think they will do it again, but with different sets of heroes. Yeah, exactly. And you right. haven't seen them. You haven't casted them. They, these guys run Bristleback off lanes. Yes. They run Doom jungles. It was brilliant when it worked. Brilliant. The one game it worked, and then it wasn't brilliant anymore. Anyway. I, I used to be the biggest fan of this team until mm. I keep cheering for them, and they keep losing. Yeah. It's it's a bit sad when that yeah. happens. But, I mean, to be fair, DD Dota used to be like that at the beginning, uh, and then suddenly very quickly became very solid with their picks. It's kind of like an exploratory phase, something of trying new stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe Rattlesnake will get into that um, that position eventually. Right now, they don't look very convincing. They did get a few games in the group stage. Um, do you, does, does any one of you remember who they won against in the group stage? Uh, at least one game they won. They were 1-1 versus LGD China. I think they were 1-1 versus MUFC. Uh, you weren't here, I actually. Wasn't here. Lumi was casting those games. He should know. No, I... Yeah, they won one against LGD China. Yeah, they won 1-1 one -one with two On teams. On day one, I believe. They had a 2-0 forfeit over LGD it, and then I think they got 2-0'd by... Was it DK? Whoever the other team was. Yeah, yeah, it was DK. In Group A. So yeah, they, they, got, they had one game off of LGD China. I think that was the big thing. They did not pick a draft like this, though. I mean... That was a previous level draft right there. That draft was so bad that... I don't know what to say. Like, I... I would say 322, but I think it's too soon. So for the next game, I think what they need to do is, firstly, they just need to ban Wisp. Just that uh, That's just a safe thing to do versus Na'Vi. I mean, Unless they, they want to pick it, which, which, I mean, Rattlesnake's a little bit unconventional. Mm. They need to not give Na'Vi Wisp. I think that's the first step yeah. to victory. Other than that, I think they just need they just need to draft better overall. And I think they will. It was mm. an experimental game for them. They don't get knocked out if they lose this series, but that was a little too experimental. Yeah. I think it's, it's better to do it in, like, in the second game. Like If you're already up a game, sure, you can try new stuff out because the next game isn't terribly important. But to, to start off that poorly in the first game, that's, just, that's totally demoralizing as a team. And I'm surprised that Rattlesnake went out on a limb like that. But hopefully they'll go back to something safer, something better, and put up more of a fight. Well, on the bright side, this puts us back on schedule. <laughs> yeah, that's a good thing. Uh, in any case, um, okay. you, you talked about offlane Bristleback. They did offlane Bristleback. Yeah. <laughs> they did Jungle Doom. Yeah. Will they do Mid Bloodseeker maybe? Is that within the realm of possibility? It, it is within the realm of possibility. I don't think these Chinese have discovered this hero called Bloodseeker yet. Mm -hmm. But uh, maybe. I think, they could, I, I think they could use it. It's too bloody. There you go. Too bloody, yeah. The oil seeker. Yeah. The oil seeker, <laughs> is that what they call him? Because he does yeah. actually chase oil. It, it's kind of black, yeah. the, the rapture. Yeah, the oil seeker. 
It's a. Uh, I just want to point out a little history lesson for you all that uh, nothing is better than the M5 Minute 5 GG. I don't know if you guys remember that. I remember that. That was in the Beyond the Summit World Tour. They GG'd at five minutes. That is the fastest <laughs> GG I've ever seen. <laughs> Rattlesnake, wow. you're not even close to PGG's level yet. They need more vodka. Uh, but with that being said, guys, game two should be coming up soon. So I think we'll take a quick break and come back for that. That okay. sounds okay. Excellent. Yeah. Just want to make sure we didn't have any anything else to talk about with the all no more no back. more flames here. No more flames here. Put your yeah. flamethrower yeah. down, Lumi. Guys, we'll be right back. Rattlesnake versus Navi, game number two, coming up after these messages.
Well, that was certainly a game. In game one, Navi forced out a 10-minute GG. <laughs> uh, I was trying to do 10, and then I got confused with my hands. I should really... Can you count that high? Yeah, it's mm. counting is hard. <laughs> English is hard. But they forced out a 10-minute GG from Rattlesnake. Rattlesnake had one of the worst drafts you will ever see. <laughs> if you want to laugh, go watch the VOD. But ga in game two, we'll see if they can have a better draft. I'm LD of Beyond the Summit. I'm joined by Merlizzi. Hopefully we'll have a better game. They have been wisps, though, so it will be better. Give me my rares back, please. A man please. can dream. A man can definitely dream. And with that being said, let's jump in the draft. Let's see what the teams are going to do. Navi, Batrider, Visage bans from them. Pretty standard stuff. And Rattlesnake also banned the Darkseer. I didn't think the Darkseer by himself was the problem. I thought it was the Wiz plus Darkseer combination. But they say we don't want any part of that. And off the bat, they get a hero who scales well with farm. This is already looking a lot better than game one. Yeah, I think they'd probably need to do a safe lane. But Lifestealer does kind of destroy Alchemist. And again, with Alchemist being so popular, I'm surprised that Lifestealer hasn't resurged in popularity as well. He can almost always rage dodge the unstable concoction. Alchemist being a very fluffy hero, which means high HP, low armor, is just absolute food for Lifestealer. And he can just Lifesteal a ton with his open wounds. And he's just much better at the early stages of the game before Alchemist gets his items with both of them have like a thousand gold or 1500 gold in items lifestyle will almost certainly win the fight yeah absolutely at the same time though lifestyle has low base armor the alchemist stun still does damage even if you rage dodge it and can actually suffer quite a bit just from fighting in essence spray. so i still think alk is in a horrible matchup versus lifestealer but to win the man fight he does need a lot of farm that's for sure rubik the choice by rattlesnake they secure a strong support here not really the best against lifestealer if he rages and goes on you you can't do anything to get away. You are boned. Yeah, where Shadow Demon is fantastic to at least keep himself alive. So that's a, in some ways a bit of a weak support, but sets up the Alk nicely, gives them some potent late game. Just from these two picks alone, their late game is like 20 times stronger than it was in game number one. Mm -hmm. And the recent trend for the ban drafts is no one's really banned any decent solo mids. Uh, and I think that will that will play much better into Navi's favor just because Dendi, he won his lane pretty handily last game. And as long, as long as they can give him something pretty comfortable in the mid lane, whether it's Puck or Queen of Pain or Storm Spirit, I think that they'll have an easy time and they can draft around what they need and not be pigeonholed into a sort of strategy that they don't want to run. Yeah, that was an awkward laning situation for Rattlesnake to say the least. But... The draft looks a bit better now. For Navi, where do they go from here? Puppies, junglers are in the pool. You mentioned Dendi's Puck is an option this game. We don't know what Rattlesnake is running mid. They've run the solo mid Alk before, but they have also run Alk as a farmer. I don't think I've seen them go for a Battle Fury Alk. I don't think I've seen them go for that Mushi, Burning Style, Max GPM, YOLO <laughs> mode. It's usually an early Shadow Blade, BKB, combat worthy Alchemist. So. Even if it goes mid, it'll probably even be the hero that builds a mech. And mech is actually really nice against Lifestealer just for the armor. The heal is sort of a secondary bonus, but we will see. I know you're not a big fan of solo mid -Alk, but the point is I Rattlesnake do not. have their laning options open. I think it's too passive. I think Navi is going to bring the fight to Rattlesnake, and it's going to be super, super early. Probably before five minutes, we'll probably see some kills. But it really depends on the rest of the draft. I think they could definitely get away with a Chen this game. I think Puppy did a good job with the Seder to harass that triple lane and just put a lot of pressure on a Rattlesnake. Again, Rubik is not a very good level one hero. He doesn't do that much damage and Alchemist if they choose to play greedy with Greeble's Greed they can punish it very heavily with a life stealer in the triple lane. I think Navi will try and contest Alchemist's farm and just pick two solos that they don't really have yeah. to worry about whether it's a Dark Seer, Puck like last game, anything like that I think will be will work well in their favor. For Navi I imagine a combo here for the life stealer. A Queen of Pain, a Storm for Dendi. The silence is great versus Rubik. You jump in, you silence him as you're coming in. He can't lift you, he can't do anything to stop your initiation. Also, versus Alchemist, if he doesn't have Chemical Rage, he's all he's incredibly easy to bring down. You get dust on the storm, you can punish split push mm -hmm. styles. So I think a storm could be a good choice here. Queen of Pain's an option, but I imagine they'll go for that solo pretty soon. We will see, though. Rattlesnake has banned four of the five heroes that we saw last game, so clearly they were just, they're just not having any of what happened last game. I think Navi banning out Weaver is a very good ban here. It's, they don't have any stuns or silences right now, and Weaver just goes to town if you don't have any, and it just it uh, kind of shuts down Lifestealer if played very well. Hello, I'm a day old banana. My name is Pete, and I was hoping you could say a prayer for me to ripe into a great yellow banana. Thank you very much. We Where's your prayer? We wish you all the best, Meep Creep.
Where's, it, where's your prayer, place. LD? You didn't that was fulfill his wishes. That was the prayer. You just said a prayer. You didn't actually say right. your prayer. Um. Um. There's the prayer. Nice. I approve of this. I was thinking it the whole time. Rattlesnake Gaming. They'll I pick up a clock. I felt with a you. presence from the from the other world. The presence of the Dark Lord. Are we gonna see a Shadow Fiend here? Probably not. That would be awesome. Uh, I would like to see a, a Dendi Shadow Fiend. That's something we haven't seen in a while. But I, I feel the Storm is a pretty solid choice. He is a bit vulnerable to Shadow Blade ganks from Alchemist, uh, so it could go either way. Maybe. I don't think he's gonna farm a Shadow Blade though. That's the thing. He's not gonna farm it early. I, at least in my opinion, with uh, their draft going so hard. They have a Nix Assassin. Nix Assassin. Yeah, and that that, that, that really leash. sets up a storm last mm -hmm. pick. Now with the profit, you can run a safe lane profit, an aggressive tri lane life stealer, and then a storm mid if they want, or off lane profit, defensive tri lane life stealer. Might be a bit better to go defensive simply because Nyx really wants level six. But either way, uh, they'll have their options here. So Rattlesnake's draft is already much more solid than last game. They have they have a very solid late game farmer at that can transition. Uh, that can transition from an early game fighter. They have Rubik, one of the best supports in the game. They have Clockwork, one of the better offlaners. So again, their draft is a little bit more put together to this game and not just willy-nilly. I don't even know what other adjectives to describe what happened last game. Willy-nilly is perfect. <laughs> we'll use that one. Rattlesnake, the fourth one. Uh, the fourth pick now coming out for them. And they have two of their farmers here, the Alchemist, the Clockwork, and they'll need one more. They're a bit melee heavy already, and Clockwork and Alka are a very awkward combination because Cogs can, in fact, often will just work against Alka. It's awkward indeed. So I saw Hawkward. one Hawkward. Some people use like Clockwork and Earthshaker, and that just makes things even more hectic for your melee carries. I I think that it is a good idea not to have that many melee, that much melee, and again, Cog plus Fissure is just really strange, and you really want a lot of range, but again, they need to be more uh, in tune, more goal oriented in their draft. Shakiro. Good AoE, vulnerable to the Nyx ganks. Also, another support that does poorly against Lifestealer. Uh, these heroes could be food. They have a lot of combos, though. If they manage to get a lift up onto the Lifestealer, they can dump them into an Ice Bath, and then, while meanwhile, they can be channeling Unstable Concoction and actually kill the Lifestealer. But again, it is going to be a relatively easy time for a life stealer if he has a good start. If we see like a uh, 8 to 10 minute phase drums, it is going to be a nightmare for Rattlesnake support heroes as well as the Alchemist. What will that Navi last pick be? What's that Dendi hero going to be? We'll find out now. I still think Storm is a pretty solid choice here. The only thing he would be vulnerable to is the Shadowblade on Alk. And like you pointed out, whether it's a offlane profit just using Trance to stop the creep stacking, uh, denying the pulls, or whether it's uh, an aggressive tri lane. Either way, Alk will not have uncontested farm this game. At least I imagine he won't. I feel like this ban is just doesn't really mean anything. If they want to ban Storm, they can use Queen of Pain. If they ban Queen of Pain, they can use Puck. And they just really need any any sort of mid hero. So Dendi will have his choice of mid heroes, providing that they.